one trade can change everything. Hello everybody, welcome to today's tutorial. We're gonna do a brief overview of channel trading, uh, specifically how to identify channels early and then how to, uh, you know, how to trade them. There are certain rules with channel trading to follow through with. And I just wanna point out how important and how valuable this is. With channel trading, people often think, you know, price just continues in one direction. Well, really, price gets a move, it ranges. Price gets a move, it ranges. Move, range, move, range, move, range. So on and so forth, over and over and over and over again. Right, that's what it does. So channel trading is such a great tool and such a great strategy because you can position yourself for the next large move while making money, you know, in that zone. You know, why would you why would you rather you know, if if you think about it this way, you know, if you're if you're trading this channel here, or no, let, let's just say if you get this move down and you think, well, I think we're going to get more downside and you go ahead and you short here. Well, now you're going to be waiting one, two, three, four. You're going to be waiting, you know, a week and a half, maybe two weeks before you finally get that move down and finally make some profits, which, by the way, price already went up above your entry in one of those twice, twice, two occasions. Right. So why not in the meantime, make money trading this channel? and position yourself at the upside for the move down, right? It's that simple. And as a matter of fact, you can even hedge yourself in the event that it has a move up, okay? So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look here. I'm gonna go down to a lower time frame, and we're going to just go ahead and uh, hit play here and we'll watch some price action. And, um, you know, we'll go ahead and, and kind of draw some channels. So we got our move up here. All right. And move down. So at this point, right, we got this move up and then we had some degree of a retracement and price sort of going sideways within that zone. So at this point, I think we could take our channel tool. By the way, I do have a tutorial on channels if you're unfamiliar with how to draw them or how to use the channel tool. Um, you can go ahead and watch that. It's under the beginner tutorials on my website. Uh, so we'd go ahead and, and draw our range here. And, you know, at some point, and I'm sure like a lot of you would say, well, where would I put my stop loss, things like that. You can also use uh, Fibonacci for that if price does not give you a place to put your stop loss. So um, I'll show you my settings here. You can go ahead and copy these. You can pause the video and copy these down. But what you could do is, you know, basically put your um, stop loss kind of above these high here, target the mid range and and so on and so forth. And actually, let's let's briefly walk through this since we're taking a look here. So what have we done? We've identified our channel. This is the high and this is the low. We're going to long the bottom of the channel and we're going to short the top of the channel. We're going to take profit at the midline and at the opposite side, right? We're going to basically, you know, rinse and repeat that method, right? So short, take profit, take profit, 50% at the midline, 25% at the bottom, and we're gonna leave a 25% runner in the event that we do get a move down. When we long the bottom, we take 50% profit at the midline, 25% profit at the top with a 25% runner in the event that we do get a move to the upside. And here's what's so great about this is with channel trading at some point, you're basically expected to get stopped out. Okay, because at some point price will break up. And if you shorted here and your stop loss is here, well, you're gonna get stopped out when it breaks out. And if it breaks down, you have your stop loss here and it, and it goes down while well, you're going to get stopped out. But here's the beauty of it. With channel trading, it's assumed and the goal would be to identify the channel as early as possible. It's assumed that you have multiple trades based on that channel.
right? Because if you trade it multiple times, you've built up some profit. So by the time that it does break up or break down, you've already made money. So when you do get stopped out and lose a little bit, it's no big deal. But plus the bonus is that you have the runner. So you get stopped out, but then your 25% runner makes back that loss, if not more. Right. So that in a nutshell is how channel trading works. That is the rule. All right. And I want to make this clear too. Oftentimes people think, well, it has to rotate from the top to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom. No, sometimes, sometimes you'll get ranges that will simply do this. You'll long the bottom, short the top, take profit at the midline every time, right? Well, maybe it goes like this and you short the top again and you short the top again before then it comes down like this, right? So sometimes you'll have multiple shorts take profit at the midline or multiple longs take profit at the midline. It doesn't just have to be short than long, short than long, short than long, okay? So we'll go ahead and we will hit play here. Long opportunity, take profit, okay. Short opportunity, take profit at the midline, great. Short and take profit, short, uh, kind of front ran, but we can see here that we're building up liquidity to the downside. Short, take profit, take profit, long. Take profit at the midline. Take profit at the top and boom, we have a breakout. Okay, so your 25% runner is running to the upside. Great, that's awesome. We're very happy about that. What did we have here? We identified the channel at this point. So we got out of this one, two, three, mm, kind of four if you did get the take profit there. Otherwise, four, five, right here. Front ran a little bit, but nonetheless, with then the breakout, right? So we had about five, six trades in this channel here that also then positioned you for the breakout. And in this case, you could have said, well, I'm actually biased towards the longs because I believe that we're going to break to the upside, not necessarily to the downside. So you could have been longing a little bit heavier, or maybe been a little bit more light on your take profits, leaving a bigger uh, runner instead of a 25% runner. I typically just like to follow the channel trading rules. You guys are welcome to alter it as you please. Maybe you find a better way than I do. And if you do, please share. Um, so one note I want to say about this, I do not set limit orders on channels. And this is exactly the reason why. Because if your limit gets hit and all of a sudden, boom, it just pumps. Well, you just got, you, you, it was a trade you didn't need to enter, right? It was a trade you didn't need to enter at all. So what I do is I set alerts using TradingView. I'll set an alert close to the top, close to the bottom. When the alert is hit, I'll go look at the chart. If I like what I see, you know, if I, if I see a wick and it closes below or something like that, I'll go ahead and I'll take the, 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 the trade. You don't have to exactly hit the top every time or exactly the bottom every time with your entry. You can get close. You, you, could, you could have entered somewhere in here or in here, you know, or in here. Just as long as you see that touch and then you get the move down and you look for your midpoint, take profit and all of that, right? So that's why I, I, I prefer market orders here in this case. So great. We had about five, six trades in this channel. We broke to the upside with our 25% runner. And now we'll let price continue here. Okay. Now at this point, you should have been able to identify some degree of a channel. We can see that price put in some kind of a wick here and attempted at making a new high and instead rejected. So we could draw out here. Our new channel, right? And maybe you could put this up a little bit. And again, when your first one, you may have to make some adjustments with it, right? So we'll we'll do this and sort of see how it plays out. Um, one thing I do want to say as well, um, again, going back to that, I realize I did not um, finish talking about this, but you know, if you use this uh, Fibonacci channel here, what's really nice is again, you know, this gives you a sort of a 
a uh, uh, an amount of, of deviation acceptance, right? If you deviate beyond this, that's no longer a deviation, that is a breakout, right? And you can use that also for your stop loss if price doesn't give you a place to put your stop loss, okay? So, all right, moving on from that, we're up to this channel now and we're gonna see how it develops. Maybe we end up adjusting it a little bit. Maybe this isn't right. Okay, so we got one long here to the midline, great. All right, so here we had a deviation. When you get a deviation of a channel like this, this is probably now where you're gonna to wanna to put your stop loss, okay? So this would be a great place for your stop loss moving forward on your longs as you continue to trade them. So we'll go ahead and see how that unfolds here. We do get the midline, uh, long, midline, maybe catch this long, midline. Okay. And again, we get another deviation and another one. But again, what happened here, we did not take out this low. We did not get stopped out, right? And also I wanna point out if we go to a four hour time frame, price did not close below the channel on a four hour time frame. It's actually holding the low, okay? So although it is, um, although we are seeing it, you know, um, deviate slightly on a four hour time frame, the channel is still holding. So that's something else to keep in mind, right? So of course, what do we do? We've longed here and we're looking to take profit at the midline. Okay, cool. That's hit, this is hit. We had a deviation. We found a good place, you know, possibly a good place for a stop loss. And here in this case, when we get this move down and you know, some kind of a move up, maybe you wouldn't have totally caught this. If you go to a 15 minute time frame, you know, here you can get a little bit better of an idea of, you know, maybe you could have caught this entry on, um, you know, looking to reclaim this, but eventually losing it. Maybe you could have caught this one, maybe you wouldn't have. It's a little bit trickier of, of, of a trade in this case, right? So we do have a deviation there. All right, short, take profit at the bend line. That's another one. Short. Mm, possible breakout, a lot of acceptance outside of the range here. Okay, so, oh, and then it comes back down and hits there. Okay, so let's, at this point now, we can see that the bottom of the range is very well respected. It's holding pretty well, but the top is having quite a bit of deviations here. So in this case, we may want to reevaluate our channel. Okay, and so what we can do here is we'll go ahead and I'm gonna put my magnet tool on for this and I'm actually going to just draw from here to here and pull it down and see if we can maybe form some kind of a new channel here. Uh, maybe let's try doing something like that and see how well See how well that is respected. And maybe we'll maybe we'll just keep this one up too, just to see if it is still respected as well. So yeah, so there'd be another trade to the midline. Okay. Yeah, we can see that this. Yeah, all right. So we do like this new channel as an additional uh confluence, right? Short the top, take profit at the midline, and look to the the lower as the place to long, maybe just keeping in mind this channel as well. And so here again, we can see we're about to gain acceptance back into the uh, lower channel here, right? The horizontal channel. Yep, and there it was to the midline, to the bottom, back to the midline. from the top and here too, this is a great area of confluence. We can see a rejection from the intersection of these two channels. So this would, this would especially be a place to look and short. Now let's just go ahead and remove these. We can see that we've taken out the high, the high, the high, the high over and again, but we haven't taken out these lows, these lows untouched, 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 
untouched, untouched, untouched. At this point, we may start to think, you know, it's having a hard time breaking up to the upside. We are having resistance with this channel. We just rejected, we just left the channel, hit here and hit a rejection on the intersection between these two. We may actually look to sweep. We may look to sweep. And when we do, when we do look for this move down, let's say, let's look to the top of the previous channel as support, maybe we'll do an SR flip, which again, I do have a tutorial on if you guys are interested in it. it's in the beginner section, SR flips. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and, and watch how this then unfolds. Midline, and we're at the bottom. So there's our profit there. We've uh, considered, oh, and all right, let's see here how this goes. Huh, and look at that, all right. Let's, let's watch it a little bit more. Okay. So what did we see happen here now? We traded this channel, we got five or six out of here. On this one, we managed to identify it at at this point. So we would have gotten one, two, maybe three, if you would have caught the deviation. Four, maybe five here. All right. Six, if you would have caught the deviation here. Seven, eight, nine. Mm, this one maybe stopped out on, right? maybe stopped out on this one. But we've already had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're at about eight trades, it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. Six, maybe seven, if you would have caught this one. Eight, nine, stopped out here. So we've had eight, nine trades. We've been stopped out, no big deal. And we break back into the channel. Maybe we short the back test. If not, no big deal. Here's 10 maybe 11, right? Another deviation. And then at this point, again, we have altered our channel and we get then this nice setup here for our short take profit, take profit, 25% runner brings us back down here. And then this is what's so beautiful about it is we then find support at the top of the previous channel, right? How awesome is that? So I, I, I'll cut it off there because I don't want I don't want this video to be too long. But we could we could certainly continue. There are so many examples, right? Um, if if oops, if we just go ahead, uh, we'll we'll just play it. We won't walk through it necessarily, but we'll just go ahead and play. Um, it's just incredible how powerful channel trading can be, uh, if uh, if you just simply follow the rules, like I said, you know, uh, and, and at the same time, being open to adjusting the channel a little bit or maybe adding a, a, an uptrend channel. Now look at this, price breaks back up and look where it is again. It's back in the channel, back test the top of this horizontal channel, right? And now price is trading inside of here again. Look at that. Awesome. Held, held the bottom of this channel, midline, take profit. Held again. Oh, nope, breaking down. So actually here, maybe even instead of doing that, what do we have again is another sideways channel. Right? And there's another channel we can trade. Go ahead and, and hide this. You can see here again another channel we can trade with. If you could have identified it here, had one, two, three trades already inside of that channel. Yeah, look look just how well respected these channels are even after the fact. Right, and, and this ultimately brings us to our current price action, 
Okay. So again, like I said, it, if, if you simply follow the rules of channel trading, right? Long the bottom, short the top, tape profit at the midline. You know, you can, you can then include things like deviations, right? You can understand deviations then and, and include those in, in your method of trading, right? If price deviates, let's say a, um, a, a channel, or if it, um, you know, has uh, some kind of a breakout or, or anything like that, there are so many um, new techniques that you can then add and bring to channel trading as well. So I hope you guys found this useful. I cannot stress enough how much better it is as a trader to let price get the massive move in, find the range it's going to trade in, use that range to your advantage to position yourself for a break to the upside or a break to the downside, have some degree of a bias, favor that position more, and simply trade the range until the breakout happens. It's a much better way than, you know, instead of getting up in here, get, getting up to this zone and saying, okay, I'm going to long and uh, I'm just going to wait for it to break out, then you're waiting a long time. And again, you know, price gets up here and you say, well, I've shorted here. And you have to wait all this time not taking any trades for it to eventually break down, right? And again, something else to keep in mind are, you know, macro channels. If we go ahead and zoom out, let's say to a daily time frame here, this is exactly how I caught the Pico top of this trade. If we go ahead and draw this, You know, you can see again here, look just how well respected the top of the range and the midline of the range are. And we even have here a deviation, right? So channels are truly, truly, truly a powerful tool. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mixture of, um, you know, given a channel, putting in a range, but also with some trend lines as well or horizontal levels. Having some extra confluence in relation to these can also be very important, but Regardless, I hope you guys uh, have learned something from this today. I hope you find this as being as useful as a tool as I did. And all, as always, thank you guys for watching.